Hey everybody, welcome back to WDAT. My name is Jacob Colshaw, Charlie Zazera, and for part two, Mr. Adam Leventhal has joined us to touch a little bit on the January transfer window. Now in part one, we touched upon Watford's talks with US Group about potential investment over the initial minority stake in the club. So make sure if you haven't watched that video yet, check out part one. This is part two, solely based on the January transfer window, transfers, any sort of potential chat um, this coming month. Uh, Adam, before we touch on Watford specifically, what does January look like for you as a journalist, as a broadcaster in this month? It's, it's busy. I really look forward to it because it's it's different. It it changes up a, a few gears. Um, it is all about transfers. It's all about sort of chasing stories. Um, I've got a sort of a broad brief at, at The Athletic to, to look at all sorts of different clubs, in the UK, around Europe, around the world, and you end up having conversations thanks to um, you know Google Translate with all sorts of people in different languages. Which and, I, and then I get to a situation where you're sort of you're you're messaging someone um, in another language because you can, um, and then they send a voice note, and then you're like, oh, I can't I can't translate that one. So so then that that complicates matters. But the majority of the work is obviously done in in the UK and the Premier League and stuff. So it's really it, it's a it's a good time, and I think it's it obviously it's important for what Watford do this season. But um, you know, for all clubs, how they behave in January is sort of is always quite intriguing because you you've got some that are cool as cucumbers and going eh, we're we're cruising, we don't need anything, we've planned our season perfectly. But more and more clubs just sort of go. Yeah, no, to be fair, we haven't got it quite right yet. Or we've got a whole spate of injuries, et cetera, et cetera. And we need to act or we're in trouble and and clubs act. So there's always stuff going on and it always goes. However much it sounds like a cliche and people like me are trying to ramp it up. It, <laughs> it genuinely does always go to the last day because it's like, and I've said this before, probably it's like when I was at school, um, you know, you leave your revision to the last minute and you hope you're going to get it right, but then you think, "Oh God, this isn't good. This isn't working. These notes aren't working. Whatever it is, you know, you ha you have to act because you think, well, if I don't act now, then we're going to be stuck for the rest of the season. So that's why it goes to the wire, and it genuinely does. So, yeah, it's a good, it's fun. It's a fun time. Charlie, there's a lot going on in the transfer window. Are you expecting there to be a lot in this January transfer window from a Watford perspective? Well, after we spoke to Adam about, about the takeover stuff, I think this is why I wanted to ask him as a first question. Um, we've also done a video of five players Watford should sign. Maybe that was a bit fantasy, kind of thinking we'd have a big budget. But obviously, check out the video we've done with Adam on the takeover stuff. But Adam, how will a potential takeover affect Watford's January transfer business? Do you think we've got budget to make signings? I don't... Well, in terms of the immediate um, budget, I don't think the potential of a takeover you know, in the next few months or in the summer really makes much of a difference because, um, yes, they they won't want to overspend, um, but it might be an opportunity where they could they could bring some money in for a, for a player that's out of favour, for example, um, and reinvest that money. But I think you have to sort of look at it in, in the context of the last few windows. They've not spent big. It's been about bringing money in carefully sort of curating it to make sure that there's enough money to keep the club moving in the right direction. You know, when Saar went, when Joao Pedro went, yeah, Saar could have gone earlier and they could have made more money and they could have been better in terms of timing of that. But they've they've sort of, they've used those sales to keep the club running along. Um, and I would imagine, you know, there aren't, there's no, they don't usually sell big in January. So they won't necessarily be minded to do that this time around i don't think they've really got a saleable asset that they would want to cash in on you know you might think yeah imran loser and you know we can talk about him a little bit later you know what what's the plan with him but how much money is he actually going to bring in yeah that's is probably the the one that down the line might be a 10 20 million pound player that sort of player you know ishmael kone is looking is looking pretty handy he might be able to sort of be a player that you can make some profit on but in terms of, I would say it's more reinvestment and a bits and bits and bobs sort of um, trading uh, in this window. Maybe a few loans here and there. I think one of the one of the sort of the features of of this transfer window 
so far in the opening so what, three or three or four days has been the number of recalls of loans that there's been into mm. clubs um, in the Premier League, sort of a reallocation of going, well, it's not working out there, so let's let's bring him in. Final piece of the jigsaw that a lot of Watford fans want is, is that striker position. And that goes on to my question from Ed on Twitter. Uh, from your understanding, Adam, what positions is Val looking for? And this is, well, we'll answer that one first. It was a double double loaded question. Yeah, well, look, and I did a piece um, with a month to go to the transfer window. So that was December the 1st. Um, and a few things have changed since then, a few things, but I don't think it's massively changed from, from that point. So I think at the moment, the position that is of most priority is probably probably now the, the right back position because Jeremy Ngaki doesn't look as if he's coming back anytime soon. Um, that is a position that they need to sort of rectify. Obviously at the moment, um, Tom Deli Bashiro is, is doing a job in filling in and filling in at a time when there's a need to rotate, especially when you've got Ryan Andrews in there um, who, you know, obviously they're big on loading and all that sort of stuff. They don't want to just, completely flog him so that's why there's also been a rotation but at the same time there's also been uh, a thought that if you want your right back to to come into midfield then probably Tom Deli Bashiru is, has got the skill set to do that maybe better at the moment to Ryan Andrews but Ryan Andrews if you see him in an attacking sense is is gonna is is a, is a brilliant player and is someone that you you hope will be able to play as many games as possible and there won't be a need for another right back but I would imagine a right back is 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 high on their high on their list of priorities to get someone in um I mentioned the piece that I did December the 1st looking ahead to the 1st of January which is the point you know we're we're around now things have changed in terms of who was going to be going to AFCON obviously we now know that Kayembe is gone so that you do lose a body in midfield but then that does open an opportunity for Delhi Bashiru to to play to play more. Um, but it did, and I mentioned it in that article because it was like, well, it was looking unlikely that Loser was going to be playing because Kayembe had been preferred at that point and he'd been playing and doing really well. Obviously, there's been the emergence of other players just sort of solidifying their position as well in, in Livermore, Kone, especially. Um, so does does Loser now get more time in that midfield? We have to wait and see, or is he going to be someone that is sort of ushered towards an exit? So that's something that is has sort of changed now because I think the impression I got at that point was, no, we want to try and get loser in the side again, but that hasn't really caught light over this last month. And it's, you know, there's been stuff on social media, blah, 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 but it's been good for him to actually get back in the side, albeit for what, 10 minutes down at, at Plymouth. So we have to wait and see what happens with with that. What has also changed is what happens in the goalkeeping situation because I think Daniel Backman, um, and I was looking before, you know, at, at the Euros, trying to get back into the mix for Austria. He's dropped down the pecking order. He doesn't want to be sat on the bench. He's signed a new deal. He's been there. He's done that at Watford. He doesn't want to do it again. So that may well change what happens. Um in terms of what they want to do. Obviously, they'd need to bring in another goalkeeper, but it might actually impact what they can do because they go, well, okay, if someone wants to actually buy Daniel Batman, well, he's got an X, X year contract. He signed a new five-year deal, didn't he? So mm. you know, it might be that they could bring in a little bit of cash and reinvest that, or they could reinvest some money for the loser. So that will change the dynamic a bit. Um, I think... Although we've seen Yasser Spria perform well out on the right-hand side of an attacking three, um, I think that maybe a more sort of orthodox right, right-sided right player might be something that they're looking at as well. Albeit they do have other options, so it doesn't feel like a priority. And then you come circle back to the, the situation with, with the striker. Can they get someone that is going to come in offer them a more reliable end product for a decent um, 
or well, guarantee them a, guarantee them a, a sort of a better end product, but also without breaking the bank and also without breaking the the spirit mm -hmm. of Ryovich and Bio. And I, that's a very difficult thing to do um, because I think that that's quite a big thing at the club at the moment. It's it's you know we've we've actually got a team spirit together, and you've got to be careful how you how you sort of move players in and out of that situation it's probably easier to move players out of it but then when you're bringing players in and you're putting noses out of joint then that can that can upset things a little bit but at the same time when Ryovic came in Bio sort of went hang on a minute you know I know what I've not necessarily got a great reputation here at Watford but internally I think well no, I think I'm a decent striker and I think he actually reacted quite well to it and has done relatively well um, obviously, it's not the ideal situation that the Watford have got in terms of a, a number nine, but you know they've been putting some results together. They have been scoring goals. They have been contributing. It's it, so I think it's a very difficult one to to sort of manage. And I I think it's I, I think they will. There's also the left back, uh, not left back, left centre back situation as well. I think they would like cover there, but then you bring into that, um, you know, they've got. They've got options at the moment. I think they would like cover on the left-hand side. And if, for example, Matty Pollock wanted to push for a for a move out um, and go and play regular football, which he would, you know, he's entitled to want to do, and he had a great time at, at Aberdeen and all that sort of stuff, then they might go, okay, yeah, he's that's fine. You go go out and do that. But now we've actually freed up a gap, and maybe we could bring in a younger left-sided rather than right-sided left-sided back up and he can then fulfill the role and then you know if we do want to then have switch to a back three late on in games then he can be the guy that comes on as an extra mm -hmm. um as an extra body but at the same time Matty Pollock I think he's a seems as if he's a positive mm -hmm. positive guy around the group as well so you sort of go well hang on a minute he's let's let's keep him around you know he's he's a good egg and he, he's 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 a trier and all that sort of stuff. All these things that you want in your squad, um, especially when the sort of the chips are down late on in games, you think, well, yeah, I'm bringing him on. I don't necessarily think he's going to let me down. So, I don't know. It's a, it's a very difficult balancing act. Any players that you know Watford are interested or have been interested in the past that they could revisit? Um, well, the one that was interesting to me, which I did mention, and it's not it's not a new it's not a new one. I think there will be a few names that might emerge relatively soon um but i'm sort of looking into and i don't necessarily just want to just throw them out there just for just for the sake of it but it would be interesting to see what if if anything in terms of um Kiefer Moore happens um and he's a striker that fits the profile of what Watford already have and might want to take an upgrade on um but he will have plenty of offers i think that Bournemouth will want to, you know, obviously get get any deal right for them, and that's that's a big part of it. And again, with the timing, when players are surplus to requirements or on the periphery, periphery of Premier League clubs, they're not in a rush to make decisions on them, really. So you have to sort of wait until the end of January. And if if the club actually wants a player in. They might act first and get that player in, um, like with Watford, what Watford did with Ryovic, for example. Mm. You know, there might have been another opportunity to take someone in later on in the in the market um, that wasn't going to get football in the Premier League, like Kiefer Moore. So then you sort of then you move to the next transfer window, and you go, oh well, let's maybe bring him in now. So. That's an interesting one from from my perspective. Obviously, you look at you look at Udinese as well. Um, any players that might become per, more peripheral there that Watford could actually go. Well, okay, let's let's try and move that move that guy over. Um, I'm also interested, and in, I think we've we've discussed this before. I've, I've certainly covered it for, for the Athletic. Um, is the the young Colombian striker um, Hurtado, who's who's sort of back in the group, back in the mix. And it'll be interesting to see the sort of the assessment of his qualities from Valerian Ishmael um, now, 
compared to what he already has in the group. If he goes, well, actually, he could maybe we could give him a go. Um, and then you start to look at how the club approaches, as we were talking about before, the next big ticket player that they might be able to sell on. You know, is it Aspria? Is it Martins? Is it is it Kone? I don't know. Is it is it Hurtado that comes in and does does well? Um, and he can be the guy that they can go. Well, look, if you're buying the club, um, you know we've got our, our squad is worth X. So you, you know it's it's all part of the conversation, I think. Um, so yeah, not not a lot of names that I've really thrown out for you, Charlie. So I've, I'm afraid I've, I've disappointed you. I've been the the seal or the walrus in your net. <laughs> it's not I'm not the guy that you wanted. <laughs> no, we'll, we'll see. And make sure you do go and follow Adam on socials because he'll be updating with all the the Watford transfer news. I'm sure throughout this January transfer window, we talked about incomings, Adam. Uh, we wanted to talk about outgoings as well. Now, there's you you mentioned both names already in the, um in sort of the transfer chat. So. Yeah. Do you think we'll sell Imran Loser this January? Uh, I think that the noises are that if he can, if they can find the right club and it's the right deal um, and it brings in the opportunity to strengthen the way that Valerian Ishmael would like to, because clearly there's been, whilst they're, they're obviously being professional at the moment. There's obviously been a bit of a clash there. And, and you know, th that's not me reading between any lines. If someone has fallen out of favour due to a lack of discipline, which Valerian Ishmael has talked about, it, it's sort of like, well, come on, look, do you want to, do you want to be part of this? Do you want to do what everyone else is doing? Do you want to actually stay in line? You sort of go well, okay. If you if you want to do it, do it and stick to it. Don't keep falling falling off and and messing around. Basically, so I think that the likelihood is that he will he will go, but at the same time, if he's given an opportunity or an opportunity. Um, manifests itself because there are a couple of injuries and he comes in and plays well or is given a start play you know for example if if he is given a start against Chesterfield in the FA Cup obviously he's going to probably go oh brilliant great I get I get to play a you know a non-league side and that's not being demeaning to them they're almost like the the Wrexham of of the National League this season aren't they they're flying so mm -hmm. um they're 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 an upwardly mobile side they've sold loads of tickets haven't they for the for the game yeah, so it, you know, I'm looking at that game and going, that's going to be a tough one. That's going to be a tough one. So, you know, I would imagine that he would probably get a start in that game unless they go, well, no, don't start him in that game because we're going to we're going to move him out to somewhere in Liga and we're going to get an option to buy, which is a bit more incentivized towards the buy side of it. And we're going to then reinvest that money and, you know, Valerian, you can get, someone that you would really like. Um, so yeah, that's the, that's the sort of the mood around it at the moment, but and it's worth mentioning again that a month ago, yes, he, he was sort of on the margins, but there was a sort of the, the, the feel of no, but come on. He, he is a quality player, technically brilliant or, or can be technically brilliant. Let's see if he can play his way back into the side, but that hasn't happened. But at the same time, he now has an opportunity to maybe do that at, during January. So I don't know. I, I think it's I, with Imran Loser. I think if you look at his path at Watford, he hasn't really been given the chance to nail down the position that he is best placed in. I, in my personal opinion, he was brought in because they messed up the situation with Will Hughes. He should have come in, played in that position. But because Watford had 15 managers that season, they all went, well, who is this guy? What were like, who, does he play here? Does he play there? Where is he supposed to play? Obviously, he had injury problems. And then now with Valerian Ishmael coming in, he doesn't like that more diminutive six. He wants more of a physical presence. And that's why Jake Livermore has, has come in. But I think that Loser would be perfect if, if maybe, you know, Ishmael had seen him 
in a in a better moment earlier on in the season, then you know it it might have sort of manifested itself. But I don't know. I I think it's a shame because I I really like like him sort of setting the tempo and obviously then he can then pop up having started the moves outside the the penalty box and and we know that he can finish really well and he can he can make late runs into the box or score from outside of the box and all that sort of stuff so i think it's a shame it's a player that's that had promise but has sort of been a bit of a victim of circumstance and he's probably not helped himself as well with his with his sort of timekeeping and and that sort of stuff which has sort of rubbed off the manager rub, rubbed up the manager the wrong way and it's it's a shame it just hasn't really worked out so it'll be he's definitely one to watch obviously during this this transfer window Ryan on Twitter asks will we get less transfer rumors now Giretta is no longer at the club I felt like in the summer the the noise was a lot less noisy and kind of the transfer deals happened kind of straight away so it'd be good to get like a bit of an insight from your end in terms of how that works in terms of how loud the noises are, a speculation when the stories can be broken, etc. Yeah, I don't know. I, there seems to be a perception that um, you know, if there's if there's someone in the building, then only then things you know come out and and stuff, which I find quite interesting, really, from from my perspective, um, because you're never ever sort of reliant on on one person is it almost sort of conjures up an image of you know a, a sporting director getting on the phone to everyone he knows and telling them everything it just doesn't it doesn't happen like that why would it happen like that um why would that be a a a helpful situation to 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 do that i don't i don't really understand it because you know you're trying to get deals over the line i think if you look at it, it's so much more competitive now because there is so much information out there and there are so many people going, you know, going at that information and putting it out there, putting their own spin on it. Um, and there are so many different, you know, channels like you guys, you're here, you know, there's there's countless different accounts on, on social media. So it's very difficult to keep anything secret. So on the whole, and this is in my experience, Sporting directors, chief executives, owners, recruitment people, scouts, etc. Yeah, you might you might speak to various people at different clubs, but they're not the ones going. Oh, by the way, I must tell you, we're just about to do this thing, but we've still got a, you know quite a few key elements of the deal that aren't de- decided. They they want to stay out of the mix as much as possible. They want they want to get things over the line, um, and. Yeah, I, I think it's. I think it's. Um, I think it. What's more interesting, rather than you know, th- things leaking out and all that sort of stuff and the sort of conspiracy theories, I think what's more interesting in this January transfer window is how how the work or, or what work had already been done ahead of this window. Mm. Um, who's going to have the biggest say in this window? Um, you know. The fact that that Cristiano Giretta isn't going to be there, there isn't going to be the the Ben Manga situation at all. None of his scouts, none of his team. So it has been stripped right back down again to Gino Pozzo, Scott Duxbury, Gianluca Nani, and the manager. And that's basically it. Yes, you've still got other recruitment people at the club and things like that, but I think it's going to be. It, 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 well, we will have to. We we'll have to like. We have to judge it at the end of this January window. Have they done? Have they done what they really needed to do? And that's why I always say in transfer windows, don't don't go too early in the criticism or the celebration of we've nailed it. You have to wait until the end of the, the window, and that can infuriate people, especially if you're saying that late in a window. People are going, oh, they're wasting, they've missed out on this player, and they've missed out on them. Da 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 da. It's like, well, no, ch- just chill out because they might go well look we've got three or four loans obviously we have to get the right amount of loans etc etc but we've got this loan player that we've been promised but we have to wait until i don't know uh, manchester united have played their fa cup fourth round tile whatever and then we will get him because whatever it's going to be so you have to be you have to be patient um and at the moment with watford 
there is there is no glaring need that there's not a there's not a, a position where you go i can't believe that having to play daniel backman on the left hand side of that attacking three this is ridiculous you know it's like that they've got players to fulfill those positions they will have an opportunity to to try and solidify their places in the side and i don't i think there's players on the periphery at the moment like tom ince for example is you know he will go well, not quite i've not nailed down my position have i really um and there'll be others with with Kayembe going for a few weeks. Right, well, I want to try and show that I can be be the guy. So, I don't know. I think that let's judge this window on, on what they do. And I think it will be really interesting because they've got rid of a lot of people who have been looking at recruitment and looking at scouting ahead of this window. And now they haven't got those people. So... Whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, we have to just simply judge at the end of January. If they if they've served up a whole load of Romans and you know they're they're, they're players that that aren't going to suit suit Watford, then well, that's not a good thing. But hopefully they plug the gaps in the right areas. They make slight tinkers here and there, and jobs are good. And then they go on a surge surge to the uh, to the playoffs. We just have to, we have to wait and see. What was your prediction for this season, Adam? I went fourteenth. Charlie, where did you finish? Go for. Temp optimistic. Yeah, I don't think I made an express um, prediction. I just think I just I wanted them to have an ordinary season. I know that sounds quite sort of um, vanilla, but I just wanted them to have a normal season where they kept their manager or kept their head coach for for an entire season. I thought that was more important than anything, and I've actually been just enjoying seeing it develop. And if it doesn't end up in promotion. It doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. Watford, they don't need that. What Watford need is sort of solidity, calmness, and and reputationally for what for for other other clubs to sort of almost move up up the pecking order of sort of barminess a, a little bit and going, wow, hang on, we we've been changing managers like Watford has. Oh, well, how are they doing? Oh, they've actually kept their manager for the whole season. Yeah. Amazing. And you know, I think that's really it's a it's an important thing, um, and I think that they've got a good guy in Valerian Ishmael. And it'd be wouldn't it be great to sort of think, okay, they've had a decent season, they finished tenth, eighth, you know, whatever it is, or they miss out just on the playoffs. No one loses their head at the end of it and goes, well, no, he's got a body of work for a whole season now, and then next season you could maybe, depending on who comes down from the Premier League and stuff, maybe make a better fist of it because you've got. A longer period of time, he's been in the building, you know. So, uh, just a bit of a bit of calmness is 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 good for everyone. I think. I think so. I think we, we all agree on that. I said at the start of the season. I mean, if you said to me one thing you want to happen this season would be keep Ishmael for the whole year, and that was, yeah. I'd take that as long as we, we're not in danger of going down. Obviously, yeah. not in a defeatist way, not like you know yeah. whoever it is. And it was looking a little bit dicey earlier on in the season, but we've seen the benefits of just a bit of faith and a bit of perseverance and a bit of calmness and no knee-jerk decisions it's like oh right okay cool oh this is what happens i'll this tell you what adam one yeah. article that i know would do really well is the inside story of sunderland away what happened in that dressing room because since that moment onwards we've been really really good i want to know what he said what we really picking out the same place but i think it, the rumor was he was in there for like an hour or something Just... yeah it took what well, that was that was one i didn't go to so i don't know the the ins and outs in terms of not that when i go to games i'm in the yeah, no, of course. <laughs> That would be that would be quite good, wouldn't it? Um, <laughs> but no, you're right. It was a turning point. Um, but it was that was when it was on the knife edge, wasn't it? And you know, he yeah. got his new contract, and they stuck with him. And you know, I think that that was more the more the messaging at the time of no, we're sticking with him, we're staying with him, and no one, no sort of animosity in in a group or anything like that. Not to say that there was at that time, because I think everyone was on message, but nothing is going to be able to fester and develop as it has done maybe in the past. No toxicity is going to be able to grow here and it it will be stamped out. And we've given this guy the opportunity to stamp it out himself. So listen to him because it's sort of, not that it's all on him, but we like how he's doing things. So, and it takes, it sort of takes the heat off of other people as well. If, if the focus is on the, on the head coach and yeah. He's got broad enough shoulders to deal with it. And I think that that's really important. And he's not put his foot in it. He's been very open in terms of his communication. Um, 
He's been very sort of um, willing to accept that things haven't quite gone right, quite gone wrong. But he's also not been digging out any decisions that haven't gone his way, really, in terms of on the pitch or off the pitch. If he hasn't got the right player, okay, fine, we'll we'll we'll, we'll deal with it. Just I, I I like the I like the environment, and by all accounts, you know, within the training ground and around around the area, and um, you know, at games and stuff. There is an assure assuredness, if that's a word. Yeah, I think that's right. Um, to how things are operating in a good good sort of spirit within the group. There's still things that you hear about Watford being a bit sort of a bit a bit off kilter and a bit left field sometimes. It, it is Watford. It's not it's not going to change overnight. But on the whole, I think you know he's done a he's done a, a good job, Ishmael, in in difficult circumstances, and they are gradually built. They're building something. It's like before Watford has always been like a game of Jenga. And, you know, there's always been someone that's come along and gone, yeah, there you go, it's fallen over. They've they've gradually been building something. And I know the analogy of Jenga because it always falls down is probably not the right one. <laughs> but, you know, they've kept they've kept it together. And I think it it's been good to watch. It's been good to watch and see it develop. It's been a bit more wholesome. Three of us in Val we trust. That's that's what we're going to go with. Yeah, I think so. Why not, Adam? What a pleasure. We've we've covered a lot there. If you didn't, if you haven't seen part one, make sure you do on the takeover talk. Part two with transfer chat. Adam, where can people find you? Where can they find your stuff? Both Watford related, both non Watford related. Yeah, just on the on the socials as per usual on uh, Twitter X at Adam Leventhal. Um, read the Athletic, theAthletic dot com. Myself and the all my colleagues, you know, regular transfer blogs on on all the news, um, in depth articles as well. The 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 reads about the inside details of of the deals after they're done, which are always really interesting. Um, but yeah, usual places, and I and I yeah pop up here and there on on Sky Sports News as well, doing the old old school presenting too. Was, so you know what, it was a real throwback seeing you on there. I was I was used to seeing you at London Colney on deadline day in front of. This is going to sound really niche, but in front of the cryo chamber. Yeah, the yeah. cryo chamber. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I remember it was yeah. before social media with the days where the thirty-second hit at London Colney was like it was building up to that every hour. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, it was good, but that was that's the you know in the in the olden days when um when Watford were obviously you know in the Premier League and were really active as well. I remember that first one when they got up into the Premier League and it was a summer window, obviously, and they signed. Like Victor Ibarbo and uh, was it Guediora and Diamante? Say again, Diamante. I remember signs the strike. Yeah, um, yeah. There was not, there was like they did loads of business and um, Obi Ulari as well. I think they signed as well. And, and you know, so it does. Yeah, there was peaks and troughs, but yeah, good old days. But no, it's been it's been fun being back on Sky here and there as well, alongside my work with the Athletics. So yeah, all is well. So. I hope everyone has a, a wonderful January transfer window. And hope, hopefully it's not a dry January. Hopefully there's there's stuff going on. Make sure you do follow Adam, follow WD18 at WD18 Fan. Subscribe to us so you don't miss any more content. Turn on your post notifications, all that good stuff. And we'll see you in the next one. Take care and up the audits.